Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 84. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building making his first appearance on the podcast. Introduce yourself to the audience. Yo, it's your boy G Mo the Great, aka King of the Hustle. You know what I'm saying? Man, hey, this is a long time coming, man. Appreciate you bringing me on. Copy that. Let them know where you're coming in from. G Mo, international hype is not just a hashtag. This is a way of life. <laughs> we way down south, man. We over here in uh, Dallas, Texas, man. We're we're super hot. Shouts out to my Dallas folks. Y'all already know how I feel about them niggas back to back weeks with them Dallas folks. Let's hit the rundown now. E Block Radio Network every Monday, two o'clock. E Block Radio Network, the exclusive home of the video for the Hot Hustle Podcast. We hype every Monday, two o'clock. Tuesdays, two o'clock. GFT Radio Network, two one six. The Blend on Wednesdays, twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. Thursdays is uh, WTNUPhilly.com, 12.30. Fridays, 10 a.m. on the I Say Podcast Radio Network. THC Media, 10 a.m. on Saturday. Sunday, still wide open, y'all. Um, Custom Hustle World on Instagram. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. That is my clothing line, Custom Hustle. We do jerseys, uh, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. Uh, custom sweatsuits, custom jackets, T-shirts. If you want to get your logo on something, it will cost you a little extra, but we can make it happen. Um and also H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do cleanouts, cleanups, roofing, plumbing, flooring, carpeting, uh you name it, we can we can make it happen. Just get at me. Uh that is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Gmo got something down there and it's worth my while. I will slide. Now <laughs> shout out to my man Gmo the Great, uh Hustle King and the King of Hustle. You know what I'm saying? Together making this episode happen. Gmo was one of my first 25 people that I reached out to when I first started How to Hustle. So we've been trying to make this one happen for a while, y'all. But you know we like to build up the anticipation here on How to Hustle Podcast, right? Um, this week, episode 84. You ready? I'm ready, man. Relationships are bad when... Uh, man, relationships are bad when the communication... <laughs> Any relationship, too. We don't just need to go male, female. We can go any relationship. Yeah, yeah. I commun- when communication off, man, like, I think we didn't got to a point where the communication, uh, people don't express themselves properly amongst anybody. I mean, they could be homeboys against homeboys, homegirls and homegirls. It could be uh, your old lady, however you feel about it. I think the commun- when the communication off, you fail. I definitely agree with that. Communication is how any relationship works two kids is communication um just so we don't get the same answer i would say relationships fail when when nobody listens if that's a fact you not if you're the type of person who just waits to get their point across and you just waiting to argue and you're not listening to what the person is saying the person is giving you exactly what it is that they want feel like and all of those they're giving you the answers to the test and you just not paying attention to none of that because you ain't listening you're not a good listener and that's a bad quality to have you're not a good friend if you're not a good listener like how can you help me with whatever the problem is that i'm telling you about if you're not listening to what the fuck the problem is right now if the person is coming to you with the same shit over and over again and they and again they ain't listening to what you're telling them then copy i totally understand but communication and listening in those relationship dynamics is always just two main things that will make the relationship fail Definitely. I agree with that 100 percent, man. A lot of people listen to respond. You know, like it's cool to listen to respond, but it's, it, it also starts with what did you say? Listening. Right. Some motherfuckers you be having a conversation with and they ain't listening to nothing you saying because it's like, oh, you said this one thing and it's like I'm making this point regardless to topic. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I got this analogy and I've been holding this for two weeks and whether it works with you or not, I'm using this analogy. Some people yeah. be like that. <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. And, yeah. So, and, and it also, that also bring me to the point of like a, re- a relationship failed when someone in the relationship seemed to lack the, the, the knowledge of the value of the person that they in the relationship with. 
So say if, that one more time for the niggas in the back. God damn. <laughs> yeah, I man, definitely. When you lack the value of the person you in that relationship with, friendships, uh, relation, serious relationships, however it works, when you lack that value, like I can tell you, man, us being around each other, we talk about hustling a lot. You know what I mean? And we got a lot of things in common with that. It's a lot of people who will listen to you because they know you got the ideas, but they don't value you, you know what I'm saying, to pour into it. They try to find ways to take from it. They try to find ways to come up off of it. You know what I'm saying? And they try to like step over you like you didn't contribute to the idea that they have. You know what I'm saying? So you get a lot of people who don't see your value. It's almost disrespect, you know what I mean? But they don't see your value and they'll try to take from you. So this goes to something me and EJ just talked about. Shout out to EJ. It was on last week's episode. What up, EJ? Um, it's like, I, to me, he was having a conversation off mic, and I told him, we don't even want to talk about this right now because I want to give you these flowers on air. Even though we could have this one-on-one -on -one conversation, and that could be the genuine conversation, but I don't want to repeat myself and make it seem like I rehearsed this shit. Right. And, and the same shit like I just was telling you is why I'm bringing it up to you, too. The shit that you got going on as far as you went from, damn, well, gee, what's up with the podcast? Because when we met each other, it was the podcast. Yeah. And when we ran into each other, the first time you see me, you walked up and said, so this is the nigga hype. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I remember that shit because you missed the meet and greet, but you walked up and was like, nah, I had to come down to meet you, cuz. Yeah, for sure. And me and you, we slid out that night and we went out <laughs> and all of that. That's where I got the Nipsey picture. I still got that joint. Yeah. Uh, then we had like the little painting of him on the wall. Yep. And um, that shit, though, like, man, I want to always want to give a nigga their flowers while they can smell them. Don't always come telling somebody some shit. Like, if something somebody's doing is inspiring you, something somebody's doing is like, damn, that's some good shit, or you really fuck with it, let them know. Niggas be having too much pride. This is another thing that makes the relationship hard or fucks up a relationship. Too much pride just to say that you fuck with something that somebody else is doing. Too much pride to tell a motherfucker, thank you. Yeah. Too much pride to tell a motherfucker like I love you or any of those yeah. type of things because it could be like a father-son relationship. You like my daddy never told me he loved me, so I ain't never telling you. Like that's stupid. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I'm always like the give the motherfucker they flowers while they're there to smell them, man. Like you said, if a motherfucker is motivating you and whatever it is that they doing, yo, man, even got to be no long conversation. It could just be yo, man. That's good shit that you doing, cause yeah, keep it up. Sure. You know what I'm and people will act like that's the hardest shit in the world is just to tell somebody else that damn that's good shit because they act like they always got to compare each other's shit my whole thing like we just talked about this shit was it's enough it's enough chairs at this table for everybody to eat i can't sit in all the seats right as much as i got a thousand hustles going on i can't do everything it has to be something that i say i'm not g can handle that you yeah. know what I'm saying you need a bartending joint? He gonna handle that for you. Like, I can know the person to reach out to. I can know where to direct you, but I can't always score all the points. You can't average 100. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? The nigga who leads the league averages about 30. Maybe <laughs> 35 if Kobe's out there in his prom. But, you know what I'm saying? The nigga ain't averaging 100. Is It don't work like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Another thing for me, man, that accountability, man. Like, I, I think within that same vein you speaking, like us as men, especially like we don't have that. Sometimes we lack that, that empathy to be like, bro, I fucked up. I apologize. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And, and like, we're rather avoid it. We're, we're rather justify we'd rather it. Fuck up the whole relationship. Yeah. Yeah. We're <laughs> cutting off everything instead of just being like, man, I, I fucked up. I, I made a bad move and I called that wrong. My fault, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah. That accountability. Man. Accountability. Who? Damn. Um, it's so hard for us to just, this is, it, it, be honest with yourself. Try to look at, uh, try to look at those disagreements. Cause I always tell people like, I don't worry. I ain't getting into arguments with nobody. We could yeah. agree to disagree. We could just look at things differently. We could just been raised differently and that's cool. We could respectfully agree to disagree, but try to look at the situation from their perspective. Don't try to get so caught up into the point that you're trying to make that you can't try and understand what they got going on. Right. That's one of them things that I always try to do, like with my wife. If we're having a disagreement about whatever, it's like, all right, try to hear what she's hearing when you're saying this. Obviously, you can't be 100% with the shit because you're not a woman. Or 
doing it with a kid, it was like, yeah, you were a kid. You're not the same seven year old that you were, but you remember what it was like to be seven. Yeah, you know yeah. you remember what it was like to be the son and not the father type of thing. So yep. always try to put yourself in the other person's shoes because it's like try to see it from their perspective and maybe you can have some accountability then because then you can say, all right, maybe I came off the wrong way. Maybe I said it the wrong way. Maybe my delivery was off. You can't have the same delivery with everybody. Nah. Like that's one of those things that you learn if uh, you want to be in a leadership role. You can't give everybody the same thing because everybody needs it differently. The exactly. same way that I'm talk to you can't be the same way that I'm gonna talk to my daughter. She's not gonna receive it the same way. Yeah, and and that's a thing too with the kids, man. I, I feel like you know we we probably was raised in a generation where your mama say I, do it because I told you to, or do it because I said so, or you got or you got black parents who wouldn't apologize even when they was wrong, and you can you can prove they was wrong, they wouldn't apologize. I think that like we got to be that new generation of like look. Damn, I, I did something wrong in front of my child. Let me apologize to my child. Let them know I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? My apology. You was right. I was wrong. I don't think we do that enough. That's the again. That's the pride. Yeah. You got too much pride to admit to your child that you fucked up. Because what do you? Because it, it's one of them things like how the fuck I'm gonna tell them I fucked up? Because you might right. put us in a bad situation, mom, dad. Like <laughs> now you blame me. Yeah, you mad at me for some shit that you decided to do. You decided to go bet all the rent money on. This, that, or whatever. Now that shit didn't work. Yeah. Now you mad at me because I'm crying because I'm hungry. Fuck, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, <laughs> my stomach touching. I need something to eat. You fucked up. Don't right. put that on me. So you got to be like, I remember uh, being in a situation where the money was just, it was what it was at the time. It was like the bills was more than the money that was coming in. Now, in that situation, because I am who I am, I'm a hustler. Just because I say I'm a hustler, I don't mean I got no work in. <laughs> <laughs> And all kinds of work, it just ain't none illegal. <laughs> um, but in this situation, I had like a year, two years where it was like the money that's coming in ain't the money that's going out. But I never paid any, never paid one bill late. Yeah. I might have paid you on Monday and it was due Friday, but right. you know, that ain't late. <laughs> that's processing. <laughs> um, but in, in them situations where you would be like just mad at the world and my daughter say something to me, it would be like, that ain't her fault. So before you give this aggressive ass answer, you know what I'm saying? She ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your situation. You handle that. Yep. But when you talk to her, when you handle her, when you deal with her, make sure that you ain't putting off none of that. Cause you had them situations, like you said back in the day, where the parent comes home and just beats the shit out of this kid because somebody been on their ass all damn day at work. Yep. But you gotta be not, you ain't like when nobody did that shit to you, so you don't do that shit to nobody else. And I think that brings us to another point, you know, even on this entrepreneurial journey, you know, um, leadership is everything, bro. Like everything you do, um, I mean, whether you accept accountability or you're making uh, the right communication moves or, you you know, whatever. I think all of that ties into the same fact of like leadership is imperfect, but leadership does accept those roles, you know what I mean, of, of being, account being accountable. It's also though the self evaluation to realize are you a good leader or not? Yeah. Just because you're put in a leadership position does not mean that you can't lead. Right. And you got to be honest with yourself and get evaluate. You got to be constantly evaluating yourself and evaluating all the shit that's around you to see if you prospering. Because there's one thing that a motherfucker can do is waste twenty years and never got any better. Yeah. Like I keep saying this on the podcast, but it's gonna keep being true. It's gonna keep being October the eighth. Every year, yep. your birthday gonna keep coming. It don't mean that you got no brighter, no brighter, no smarter. You didn't mature at all. Me and E again, and we keep referring to this episode with E because the shit was just crazy. We've been talking to E for years now, and to hear where E is at now from when I met E is beautiful. To hear the growth and the maturity, and yeah. like to hear what he's the way he's thinking, the way he's moving now. Like I told him that on the episode, but it's like. You got to be paying attention to this shit. Yeah. Everybody doesn't have that in them. So even like if you are the person who you you lose an uncle and he left you three properties and now you are in the leadership role, it don't mean that you know how to sell them, where to sell them, what to get for them. You got to be smart enough to know to put yourself in a position to get with some people who do know. Yep. Not just, oh, I got it. So I got to be the one that takes us there. Not always. If you're the smartest person in the room all the time, you got to run out that fucking building. 
Yeah, switch yeah. blocks, switch build, switch uh, zip codes. You gotta go because something ain't right there, and you gotta recognize that though. But if you always got all the fucking answers, then got man, me. Facts, facts. So that's one of the things, man. I know, like, like on my personal journey, man. I, I lately been trying to switch like jobs. You know what I mean? Like try to switch careers. So I've been in insurance. And I'm trying to go into tech. Which, like, man, to all my black people listening, man, all my people of color listening, hey, tech is the new hustle, bro. Like, go get them certifications, get that money. Like, it's out there, and they ain't worried about degrees and none of that. Get these certifications. You could get certifications for a few hundred dollars and be making six figures easy. So put a pin in that. Hold up now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> walk walk us through walk us through that now go ahead i'm gonna take a sip and you you and go ahead check this out like i'm so what i've been doing man like you know we all have these aspirations to want to be better get this money um but we, we we typically stick with the same lanes of thing when you're a young person you think in rap you think in basketball football when you get older you think you're gonna open a boutique you're gonna open up some something that you know that you're gonna make this money and you start to find out that it's a slow grind. You know, you, we got aspirations to be millionaires, but it's, sometimes you just can't connect the dots. So I, I was in a place like that, man, where, you know, we recently going through this inflation and I'm like, bro, I'm like, I got these little ideas, but none of these are, they bring in a little money, but they ain't going to bring me in these millions. And you got to, a lot of us got to be honest when, when the business is not going to be what you think the business is going to be. So we got to be honest and, and like really look at that. So, I started looking into tech careers that were easy to get into. I came across this one called a Scrum Master. And I had heard of it before, but I'm like, the name sound corny as hell. So I'm like, bro, I'm like, this is a scam. You know, and you know, like I heard of it back in 2020. In 2020, that's, I, feel, I feel like that was the year of the scammer. Everybody had a webinar. Everybody had something that they were selling you online. So I ended up seeing it then. I was like, nah, they ain't nothing they to get me. So I ended up. Falling back into it now. I've been working in it maybe, or I've been studying it for maybe about the last 60 days. Um, the, the certification, you, you got to take a two day course to get certified. The certification maybe cost about 450, something like that, roughly. You pay 450, you get certified. And then, man, it's so much content on YouTube and Google that you can find to like learn how to do this job. Now, I'm getting interviews. I got an interview tomorrow. I'm, I'm getting interviews now where we're negotiating. Um, paying me like seventy dollars an hour. We, we looking at the one hundred and forty k area. Like anybody talking to me less than um, fifty dollars an hour, I, like I'm I'm dead in the conversation because now, like I got this value, and this is off for of sixty days, man. Like I, I took every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and studied, like for the for the whole summer. So I've been really locked in. So when I was telling you about how you know uh, you just asked me how I was gonna move certain things, I'm gonna keep that a secret because we gonna we gonna spring that Happy on. That. Mm -hmm. But you asked me how I was going to move certain things. And I was telling you, I'm going to take this avenue to do it. This is how I'm thinking this avenue. It's just not me shooting it off. It's me like, I already didn't plan this out, how we finna get it. And, you know, uh, uh, so like I'm saying, this this career field doesn't take a degree. You don't have to go to college. You just have to go sign up for this course. Uh, ScrumAlliance.org. Check them out. They'll get you together with finding a course. Um, but once you get the course, man, and you can show them that you know what you're talking about, Instantly gonna be in a six figure club. Just that easy. Oh, most of the jobs are remote. Uh, most and it's like you in the tech world without knowing tech. You just a facilitator. So basically, if you ever worked at a job and you was over fun committee, you brought the cake in, or you kept the morale up of everybody. That's pretty much the lane that you're gonna be in with this. So you know you don't have to worry about them. I need to know how to code. Nah, we got developers on the team to code. You don't worry about code. You just make sure that they stay on track. That's it. And so with that, we we put you right into the six-figure world, right? And, man, there's so many other certifications. You got Scrum Masters. You got um, Product Owners. You got um, the AWS, which is the the Amazon at, um, the Amazon Cloud uh, certification. That, that one, $100. Um, you got the Google one. You got Azure. Like, it's so many. Like, I'm, I'm just giving this free game, man. It's free game. Talk like, that shit, bro. <laughs> this stuff up. I'm talking about this is the one that like, man, yeah, I, I know you. And, and this is the thing. You don't got to go to this career field and fall in love with it. Go to this career field, get the bag, and then invest it into what you really got a passion for. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what it is. Like, don't fall in love. Be like, oh, I got a little tech now. Nah, get this tech bag and then go ahead and buy your bundles or whatever it is you want to sell. Go ahead and buy your lashes or go ahead and start your barbershop or whatever it is you want to do. Take this money, reinvest it into self. You're talking about at 140K a year, you're talking about that's going to break down to about 11,000, roughly 11,500, 600 a month. We're talking about you getting about five bands every two weeks. Easy money, easy cleanup. Like the tech is the new trap. Like, seriously. Talk that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He was saying, damn, all right, man, I got some homework to do my damn so we <laughs> log off here. Yeah, <laughs> the new trap, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, we, I know, you know, back in the day, you say something about tech, everybody was a bit overwhelmed with it. You can't, you like, damn, I ain't been about this computer uh, geek stuff. I ain't, nah, nah, that's, that's the wave, man. I'm telling you, it's, it's the wave. Nah, I see some of my folks was on the ground floor for tech shit, so I um, yeah. wasn't hip as far as to... Exactly how you even get in the game, but you know what I'm saying? Copy that. Because I knew yeah. some of them niggas and them niggas is eating. Yeah, eating real good, man. I'm telling you. So, yeah, this is the new way. When, when we see all the, the Africans and, and we feel like, how these Africans getting rich in America like this? This is how Africans is getting rich. They they trading the they trading the sauce with each other. So I'm here to trade the sauce with, with my fam. Like, you listening? Hear me out. Like, put, take a note. Remember the, the word scrum master, you know what I'm saying? Like I bet like, you're glad you hit the button now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, easy, easy way. I'm talking about I've been in 60 days and I'm I'm getting I'm getting offers and, and conversations and stuff from people like Sirius XM, people like AAA, people like um what's one of my uh Toyota. Like, I mean, these are like big companies, Nike, mm-hmm. and it's it's money, it's real money, it's legit, it's no scam. It's what it is. Something that you said there in the beginning, too, is you got to, oh man, you got to invest in yourself. This is week three in a row where we talk talking investments in yourself. Facts. Got to invest in yourself. And that's just it. I mean, no matter how many different things it is that you have going on, you cannot go like you saying having a, everybody want to have a million dollar dreams, but those million dollar dreams don't happen overnight unless you hit the number. Yeah, like you got to understand that nothing started yesterday and popped off now and today is going to have to be some story. Like there has to be a story there. There has to be some bumps in the road. There has to be some bruises. There got to be some adversity. There got to be something in there that makes you go like, do you really want this shit? And when you go through the do you really want this shit, then it usually works out. But when you get those hard times and those trials and those tribulations, either you fold or you step or you step up to it. Most motherfuckers will fold because you didn't really want it. It was just something to do at the time. Yep. And that's a fact. And, and also, man, like, I mean, and, and I'm just sharing this game because I feel like in our community, we we have a problem with putting each other on. You know what I mean? We, yes. we each other's well, I can't talk down on you if you at the same level as me. Yeah. So why would I want to get you to the same level? That's how most motherfuckers think. And that's the yeah. stupidest shit for real. And that's yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm just I I'm just, want I can't my get my my goal is first class. We can't talk about first class if you don't even know which way the airport is, though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what's real. Like, you know, we, we all got a brand and we all got you know, so I slowed down on a lot of my brands to focus on the ones that was actually making some some residual. And the and the reason behind it is like, I mean I was, listen, I was listening to something Jay said. I think Jay said he was on with uh, Kevin Hart, and he was like, having 100% of nothing means nothing. You know what I mean? And so we'll go out here and buy the logo and buy the T-shirts and be like, yeah, this this my logo. Like, we, buy, I'm, I'm, I'm a businessman now. I, I own 100%, but you ain't making a dollar. It's the second time in the last three episodes somebody brought up this Jay-Z Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's real, man. And so that's what, like me, if I come up with an idea and I see another person who can help execute that idea, I don't mind doing 50-50, 60-40, 40, 40, 60, however we line it up. I don't mind because if we can eat and we can make residual, I don't care about getting 40% of a residual if it's money, if it's constant money instead of 100% of nothing. But that's again, it's that pride, your own pride yeah. and your dumbass ego getting in the way. This is another one that I'll give you. Shout out to Bobby Dollars. Bobby been doing landscaping for years. So when somebody brings a job to me about 
something that I ain't know, why would I not call him and lean on him who has the knowledge and the information to do it? Why would I yeah. just go, I can just, I could go out there and wing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he told me exactly which product to use, how to, how long to leave it, and then what to do to get the shit up. Because yeah. he know you'd be a fool to have those resources and not use them, which is what most people do. Man, let's jump, on, bought, no, let's jump bought, on the back of that, though. Like, honestly, man, I'm going to tell you, like, we're doing everything that I've ever done business-wise. I always try to have a, a multiple businesses. I'm going to tell you the most valuable thing that I, I was able to invest in. And a lot of people, and it's kind of tied to this because people don't want to ask for help. Some people don't want to lend help. But the most valuable thing I paid into um, doing photography, right? Like, I went in, found the OG photographer. Became asked him to be my mentor. You know what I'm saying? He know the game. He had the, he had he had the game down packed, and he was gone with it. I asked him to be my mentor. I paid him to be my mentor. And after doing that work with him, man, I'm talking about I saw that all the years before I wasted so much time, so much money, so many missteps trying to figure it out by myself, like watching YouTube videos. Because YouTube it'll help with some things, but man, for anything that make, anything on there, there's a video that's gonna support it. You can go in there and find a video on, on why Satan is the, is the best guy to, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can find anything on YouTube to support an idea, but it don't why mean not right. to wash your hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it don't mean it, it don't mean it's right at all. So I had to, I was stuck into learning stuff on YouTube, buying all the wrong equipment, buying all the wrong products, making all the wrong mixed steps. I went and got me a mentor and locked in with the mentor, trained with the mentor and he kept me on point. And that's the most valuable thing I put my money into was getting a mentor. And I, I think a lot of us who are going into business, if you got a business, whatever your brand is or whatever it is you're choosing to sell, find somebody who's successful in that lane. Talk to them and ask them what it's going to cost for you to work with them or be a mentor. And don't think of it as like, damn, he's trying to charge me. Think of it as like that's an investment again. Into that's yourself. an investment in yourself. Yeah, copy yeah. that. Um, before we wrap this episode up now, we're going to throw a little shine, a little light on G now. Uh, like I said, when we met, we was doing the crown jewel podcast. Uh, we, you now ventured off into, you got the candles going, you got the photography going. Let's talk a little bit about that. Where can the folks down there in Dallas, let, uh, where you, where can they get their photos taken? Or is this just a dollar situation? Are you sliding out of town to take these photos? Like, let them know about that. Man, I'm I'm all around, man. I definitely slid out of town a few times. I mean, you you can call me, we can put it together. Um, but uh the brand is Great Visions. So, you know, still piggybacking off that G Motor Great, but Great Visions, that's spelled G R, the number eight, and that's visions. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't do no hood stuff because I can't remember how, how I would spell it. So I had to keep it all, you know what I'm saying, proper. Uh but <laughs> But it's Great Visions, greatvisions.com, Great Visions on Facebook, Instagram, um, all of that. So check me out at Great Visions. We do videography. I do a mobile podcast. I pull up and do a pod, record your podcast. We can edit it, put video to it. Um, I'm doing videography. We got the drone work. We do, do it all. Pr pretty much I work with a lot of the brands. So if you got a brand and you need that expertise on footage and a little bit of business knowledge, like I'm your guy for that. You know what I'm saying? So just hit me up any kind of way. The candles, man, the can candles came about literally it piggybacked off of Crown Jewels. Like everybody wanted me to do T-shirts for Crown Jewels. And I was just like, bro, like I hated making T-shirts. I bought all the equipment. I hated sitting at home pressing up T-shirts. And I'm like, and the market became a little saturated just making T-shirts or whatever. So I'm like, you know, I ain't feeling this. I'm like, I need to have some kind of other method of e-commerce to make merchandise. It makes for my, me stand out. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm like, I like candles. You know, when I was single, I ain't had no wife or whatever. I had a little shorties come through. I light up all the candles in the house and, it's, and you know, we good. And I'm like, so let me try this. So I went the candle route, end up liking the candles, man. Really like blending my own scents together, making my own names and everything for it. And the candles actually turned out pretty good. So uh, the candles are Koth Collection candles and that's K-O-T-H-K-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-O-N. Uh, Koth is uh, a nickname for me. It's also the brand, my LLC, uh, which stands for King of the Hustle. So King of the Hustle Collection uh, Candles, but Koth Collection. Um, but check me out, man. I got uh, wax melts, candles, all of that, man. All the smell good, masculine, feminine, tropical. Give me, give me two Give me two candles. That's the, the good smell goods. Give me two of them. Man, that you would it, recommend. 
So definitely by customer choice, man, you're going to want to look at protect my peace. Protect my peace is more of like a, a common smell. It was, it's like a little bit of lemon, a little bit of peppermint, but it give your house that real refreshed smell. You know what I'm saying? Keep you motivated. The other one, the ladies go crazy for it, man. It's level up. The level up candle is the candle that smells like a little bit of mahogany and teak wood. Kind of give a masculine smell. You know, a lot of women want the house to smell like me and been in it. So those are like my two best sellers right now. Uh, if you ask me, I like the summertime sunset. That's a guava smell, real tropical light. It's one of my favorites. Okay, yeah. copy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we shipping candles in and out of the town and all of that? We're doing big shipping. You can go over to copscollection.com. The candles are all there. And while we edit, man, like, we're going to go ahead and put together, you know, for all the listeners, you know, a coupon code. Now, we ain't decided on what it's going to be. H2H. I'm going to let my man H2H bet. H2H, H2H is going to be, give me about, I don't know when it's airing, but by the time it air, like, yeah, we're going to have up the coupon code of H2H, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to go ahead and knock off like a good 15, 20% off of some candles for you guys. Copy that. October the 10th will be the debut of this episode. Okay. So, yeah, by, by then y'all we'll, heard, we'll be all in. We'll be locked y'all in. Y'all heard it here, man. My man G Motor Great came on. He gave some free game. He gave me a little homework to do. And he gave y'all the promo code of H2H. Y'all go slide out. Get those candles from my man. And you know what I'm saying? Light up your situation. So you have the summertime gava. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but shouts out to my bro G Mo G. I appreciate you coming on, bro. That was episode 84. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>